the very first thing to begin with so anybody who begins with the world of embedded systems or iot uh, they go ahead with an arduino the reason so is because this has a a uh, huge ecosystem it has a very awesome support it has a very good help uh, available around there and also very much robust to start with when i say very much robust is because like uh, even if you do some mistakes even if you're not really doing it great you can still start with that because the way it has built the way it has been a uh, overall put into picture is amazing i mean like it is pretty much good to go with any of the beginners so it has a complete ecosystem it has its own id it has boards it has uh, libraries it has the whole community which can help you with and there are millions of people who are into this who would really be happy to help you with around these things now here when i say uh, uh, you know it has multiple different boards and in coming into it. development boards they have it and uh, uh, the most famous or you can say the most uh, preferred board people usually go like the go to board people have is the arduino uno and the way it is is made in a way that like it is the most preferred like it is easy to use very robust when i say robust like it can really handle the uh, fluctuations of the voltages even if you sometimes short circuit it it's fine it don't mean that you can short circuit every time but even in just in case if it happens to be it's perfectly fine it has a voltage regulators it is made in a way that it's pretty much good to go ahead with this then we also have an arduino mega which is uh, used by the people who have advanced the arduino uno like when they have a lot of applications coming in uh, when they have multiple different uh, sensors and so so let me just uh, go uh, side by side so that i can also show you the images of those and how they look like uh, just in case that you could have a better idea into all of these things okay so i hope you can also see my uh, google chrome screen out here so what i'll do is i'll just switch back here and then search for arduino uno out there okay so here we go so this is how the arduino uno looks like here so this is an arduino uno, the most preferred uh, both people go ahead with so this is we go here and this is how the arduino uno looks like so it has pretty much everything you would require for you have all detail pins on this side you have analog pins on this side then you have a voltage regulators which can really handle the things you also have a, a oscillator which is nothing but the frequency the clock and then you have a uh, 3.3 voltage regulator out there so this is an uart okay this is a 3.3 voltage regulator then we have a, a usb type b connector okay so arduino uses a usb type b all right and then you have a 20 up to 24 volts uh dc jack also coming into it and uh you have some power pins also here so that you need not require any additional power supplies if just in case you want to go ahead with and this is your microcontroller so this is your uh, microcontroller here usually uh, you might have seen the microcontroller this way also so this is your microcontroller what you see here uh, this is the microcontroller we have into it arduino microcontroller so this is a microcontroller by atmel so atmel is again a manufacturer so the microcontroller which is used in this is atmel atmega 328p okay so this is having 14 pins on each side that is total of 28 pins microcontroller all right so this is the most uh, go to board everybody prefers it and because it is also very much easy to use out there similarly uh, i mentioned that arduino mega out there right so how exactly arduino mega looks like so it has a lot of pins it is a huge board out there so you can see this it has a lot of pins out here so we get a uh, pretty much option for uh, going ahead and using so many different pins so you have uh, pins coming here until 13 and then again 15 16 17 22 24 52 pins and then analog pins and then the power pins you have it so whenever you have a lot of uh, different uh, applications you have to go ahead and use it you can go ahead with this particular uh, development board because this is uh, really amazing uh, if you have a lot many digital inputs outputs to be connected and uh, if you also have multiple different analog pins to be connected then this is the go-to board we have so this can quite uh, very much handle everything uh, you would require of having it moving further with the things we also have a Arduino micro board. So how exactly it is? So it is pretty tiny, uh, pretty tiny here. So this is how small it is. So it's almost like a nano and micro. Almost they look similar in uh, shape, similar in sizes. So here you can just have a look at this Arduino micro here. It says Arduino micro here, and this is having a again 8 mega 320 32U4. So you can see this. It's pretty small, very small in size. Uh, pretty small, might be this much in size so this is good for the applications where you have to keep the whole thing uh very small uh 
compact and so on so they perform the same exactly the same they perform it the way Arduino Uno could perform but Arduino Uno is more robust you can say because it has a uh, like everything full fledged and here we have some sorry you can see this we also have one more Arduino Pro Mini which is you know, pretty much more smaller than that this is how it's small it is and it is much more solid than the normal one then we have an Arduino Nano which is almost similar to this exactly similar almost so uh, Nano so here we go and you can see this it looks similar and this one Arduino Nano comes with your uh, a micro USB uh, port here so this micro USB port you have it here and this is your uh, uh, art mega microcontroller what you have here on the SMD mounted okay and you have a button here for the reset and then all your detail pins and analog pins and the power pins are here so this is not really like uh, this does not have any uh, DC power jack and all of this and this does not have those uh, power controller but yeah this does have a 3.3 voltage regulators to regulate the power and can take inputs up to 5 volts it also has a v in pin where you can directly give a 5 volts uh, input and also take a 3.3 volts output if you need it so you can do that anyway so you can provide 3.3 that will bypass the regulator and then directly go to the microcontroller or you can give a 5 volts from the v in pin from where you can just that will go via the uh, voltage regulator and a step down to 3.3 volt and then go ahead so you have this then we also have an Arduino Leonardo. This was an uh, old board actually, like uh, not, you don't really get it now. Uh, nowadays, this board, okay. Uh, this was, uh, you can say like initial versions we had this. Looks pretty much similar to the uh, Arduino Uno, but yeah. So this is this is the scenario here. Uh, you don't really like find it everywhere possible. And this has a micro USB uh, port here. And you can see this RX and receiver transmission and light and turning on and all of these things. And similarly, like almost similar to the Arduino uh, Uno, but still, uh, this is not really so famous uh, as you have your uh, uh, Arduino Uno there. But looks almost similar, and the sizes are almost similar to the Arduino Uno there. Then we have it as uh, there are some Arduino versions releases which also comes with. Uh, let me just show you that thing Arduino Uno uh, with Bluetooth. Okay. So uh, there are some versions which comes into this picture also. So yeah, you can see this. This is what we have it here. Which an, uh, this is with an uh, Arduino with a Wi-Fi module built into it. Because by default, the Arduino architecture, like the Arduino development board, doesn't come with any of this. So what are the boards you saw right now? The Arduino Uno, the Arduino Mega, the Arduino uh, Pro Mini, or Micro, or Nano, or you saw this thing. We also have a uh, uh, Arduino tiny i'm like a uh, small one very very small one okay so you get all of these things so and none of them have a uh what we say uh wi-fi or a bluetooth built into it you don't have any of this uh, wireless communication built into it if you need to have those things you need to uh, go ahead and use an external modules something like this you can just have a look at this you have a uh, external module like this is a bluetooth module hc05 so you need to go ahead and use this kind of boards additional uh, modules within it if you want to have any of the wireless connectivity into it all right so here we go out there and uh, let me just uh, try to show you that so Arduino lily pad is one more here we have it which are like usually uh, prefer whenever you have variables okay so this is what i was mentioning right now so these are like very small a coin cell kind of thing just a small size of a uh, coin what you have it so which is good for uh, variable projects if you have it so this is, is intensively made for very small things where you have very compact you can see this it's pretty much circular in shape also and you have almost uh, multiple pins out there you can literally do everything you need to go ahead and do with it and yeah even this does not come with any of the wife uh, like wireless connectivity out here so remember that so this is a world of uh, Arduino and there are multiple different versions and releases also people have released with uh, some with uh, built-in um, like attached uh, OLED displays, some with uh, wi like Wi-Fi attached into it, some with the battery holders attached with into it, some with a LoRa attached into it. Like they have just because it is an open source, right? So even you can get that complete schematic of an Arduino and then modify it as per your choice. So that goes uh, pretty well with it. Fine. Uh, now moving further with the things, uh, let us understand the other range of boards here. We have ESP266. 
So this is a microcontroller ASP266 by uh, Espressif Systems. So this is like a very much a hugely fleshed market they have and loved by the innovators and the people on prototypes whenever you want to do it. But the reason so is because they are compact. They are also pretty much a, a, a affordable, economical, and they come with a Wi-Fi built into it and also a much, much faster than your Arduino Uno because Arduino Uno runs on 16 megahertz, all right? But whereas this one usually runs on 160 megahertz, which is almost 10 times faster than that. So this is the reason like people prefer this. And also it is uh, much more affordable. Let me just show you here. There are multiple different uh, uh, releases of it, like versions, like for example, we have Arduino Uno, right? Similarly, we have the most uh, sorted one with a Node MC, uh, sorry, ESP266 is Node MC, okay? So this is the uh, development board, which is based on ESP8266 usually. So you can see this, you have this, is the board you have and how small it is and works amazingly beautiful. It's very small, compact enough, powerful also. And also you get a Wi-Fi module built into it. And you have a, a micro USB connector also, which adds up to the thing. And even the same goes here. You can also give a 5.5, 5 volts to it. Sorry, you can give a 5 volts into it. And you can also give it 3.3 volts, which will bypass the regulator, voltage regulator, and go ahead as normal. So you get to have all the things you would require. You could do with the uh, uh, Arduino much faster. And additionally, you can also have a Wi-Fi into it. You all can since you have a Wi-Fi into it. And also economical than the Arduino Uno boards. And you need not buy an additional cable because most of you all might already have a uh micro usb cable so it's it's very much good to go with so this is one of the uh additional board we have out here there is one more release of this which is like also very much good which is much more compact which is a uh, vmos d1 mini and i really love this board whenever i have to make many small compact projects so this is a vmos d1 mini you can say like a uh, uh, a little more uh sort down board in a small compact size it's actually com node mc itself is a compact but this is much more compact than that. This is how it is small little thing. And you have some pins out here. So yeah, you, you have to compromise with the number of uh, pins you get, but that's fine. So you may not really have multiple different things to go ahead with. So you still get so many number of pins you have it. You have one analog pin you get with this, just one analog pin. So if you are uh, uh, intensive about analog, then you have to reconsider the thinking out into it, okay? You have one analog, analog pin. And then you have multiple different detail pens out there. You, here also you have 3.3 V3. You get a Wi-Fi, perfectly fine. And uh, 5 volts 3.3 V3 out there. And antenna as normal, you get into Node MC out there. So this is another development board we have based on this. And it really works amazingly beautiful. So this is about uh, your Node ESP266. We also have multiple different releases out there. I'm not going to talk about those because these are the most uh, uh, popular out here and I want you all to know about this and this is what we have it. Then uh, one of the most loved board, which is also my favorite and I also have it here with me now. Uh, I'll just show you this, <coughs> how exactly this works. And the reason why it is uh, my favorite and why people prefer like the IoT community prefers this the most is uh, because of its uh, size, the performance and the uh, availability and also the options it provides you with. So we have in here ESP32, which comes in multiple different versions. Like you also have a normal, and then you also get a Pico, which is very small in size. I'll show you both of them, how they look like. So we have ESP32 development module, and then we also currently have ESP32S out there, and then some other versions being released currently. A uh, lot very much popular in the market currently, still yet to come. I'm also waiting for those so that I can also get hands into it. But let me just show you the normal ESP32 out there. And you would see that this is a uh, very much uh, similar to uh, very much similar to your Node MC out here. So you can just see this. So if I go to the uh, images out here, so even this is by Expressive Systems, ESP, Expressive System itself, all right? So this is the ESP32 development board we have out here. Pretty simple out here, exactly almost like a uh, Node MC, just a little bit wider, that's all you get it. And you have very various different advantages with this. That is, uh, firstly, like you, you have an option for single core and dual core. So usually they come in dual core CPUs. Okay. 
and it, it works until 240 megahertz which is much faster and dual core remember that and then you have different memory options that is you get for 4 mb 8 mb 16 mb also and the most amazing thing you get a bluetooth and a wi-fi both built into it additionally you also get a temperature sensor and a hall sensor that is magnetic radiations so you get both of this also built into it and these are pins what you have in this some are touch sensors also when you touch them they can be detected so you can also use them as a touch sensor so you get all of these amazing things and also pretty much economical almost a, almost the price of an Arduino Uno or less than that so this is why like this is the most uh, preferred and as it has a dual core CPUs, you can also go ahead and run uh, multiple processes or concurrent processes, concurrent tasks at a time. So you can have uh, light blinking also, you can have a, a data being sent to the uh, cloud at once itself, both the things happening at the same time. So that is one of the uh, amazing thing which can happen with this, which you cannot really go ahead and do with a Node, M Node MCU or a Vmos D1 Mini or an Arduino, because they have one single processor, right? So one single uh, CPU, so they, it cannot, once the CPU can do any one task at a time, might be can do it faster, which may uh, make you feel that it is doing it, but it can only, uh, in a real, it can only do one single task at a time. But this one can do two different tasks at a time. You can uh, make use of uh, free uh, real-time operating systems and make sure that you can go ahead and then uh, run two different tasks at once. And I'll be teaching you that also. And I really love that way. It works two different things working at the same time, which we don't really do with other development boards out there. So this is one of it. And then you also get a new Pico boards, okay, which is uh, pretty small. So Pico D4, uh, very small, tiny in sizes, like uh, you had your uh, Arduino, right? So even this is a uh, Pico, you can see this. This is a P uh, based on the Arduino Pico, which is this, this small size, like thumb size out here. Or uh, you can also get it this way. So you can see this very small and pretty much stable so this is your ESP32 out here very small in size so if you have a limitations of your constraint with the storage you can go in and use this and that should also give you the complete functionality what you get in the larger one that is the standard size also so you get to have all of this and it really works amazing out here uh, now that we know that what are the different uh, most probable and most popular development boards we have and uh, the, co the quick comparison between those and what is the connectivity options you get with those things so go ahead and drop me a message in the chat box and let me know like which is your go-to board and which one do you want to start with you do love to start with an arduino or a node mcu or an esp32 and why would you thanks for watching